Good evening and welcome to this evening's lecture um, on behalf of Engineers Ireland. We welcome you here this evening. Um, just in case anyone's wondering, we're experimenting with webcasting this evening. So um, in theory, and we may find out shortly whether in practice or not, but in theory this is um, being broadcast and also being recorded. So if there's any bit that gets missed or if there's any contradictions, you can go back and find exactly where they were made and um, <laughs> nail the speakers afterwards. Um, before we start, um, I'd just like to remind you of the emergency exits by the door there and there, and also please to either turn off your phones or put them to silent. Now, this evening's lecture um, is an interesting one. I, I think we've, we've quite a number of people here. Um, I'm looking forward to it myself um, with a bit of trepidation. But it's in relation to the, the septic tanks, the National Inspection Plan, and the experience from, from Cork. So our two speakers this evening are Frank O'Flynn and Mahmoud uh, Shaladan, and they'll take us through what, I guess, the requirements that have brought around the inspection program and the experience to date to see where it is, um, what's been learned so far, and where, it, where it's going in the future. So I'd like, without further ado, to um, welcome uh, Frank O'Flynn to, um, to be the first speaker. Thank you. Thank you very much, and thanks for coming, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name is Frank O'Flynn. I'm working with the Environment Directorate at Inniscarra, Cork County Council's Environment Directorate. Um, and for our sins, we were tasked with taking on the National Inspection Plan for Septic Tanks in County Cork. So Mahmoud is, is managing the programme, and I'm working with Mahmoud. So um, we'll try and take you through how we got here and what we're doing and what we've found so far. Um, we're still learning, really. So I suppose what, we, what we'd like to talk about is why have we got registration and inspections of septic tanks? Um, just to mention the legislation, I'm not going to go through it because there's quite a lot of legislation involved. Um, what's involved in the registration process? Say a little bit about the National Inspection Plan and where it brought us. Um, there's two parts to it. There's a citizen engagement strategy or a public awareness campaign and the actual inspections themselves. Um, we'll say a little bit about advisory notices, which are the outcome if you fail an inspection, um, remediation works, and grant aid. Um, so why do we have registration and inspection of septic tanks? Um, I suppose what really drove it was a European Court of Justice ruling against Ireland in October 2009. Um, we were found to be non-compliant with the Waste Framework Directive. Um, that rumbled on for a number of years and was finally closed in May 2013 and we had paid something over two and a half million in fines at that stage um, and it was closed because we brought in the National Inspection Plan and we brought in legislation to bring about inspections and regulation of septic tanks. But I suppose maybe it should have come around a lot earlier um, because the real story behind this, I think, is protection of ground and surface water quality, and particularly drinking water sources from malfunctioning systems. And I think we'll, we'll, we'll show later that there are quite a lot of malfunctioning systems out there. Um, just briefly, the legislation, Water Services Act 2007 is the parent legislation. Um, we had Water Services Amendment Act brought in in 2012. Further Water Services Acts, 2007, 2012, um, again dealing with the re and the regulations. We had registration and inspection regulations in 2012. Um, further regulations in 2013. Planning and Development Amendment regulations in 2013, which effectively mean that if your septic tank is non-compliant and you're served an advisory notice, you don't require planning permission to carry out remediation works. Um, and we had granted regulations brought in again in 2013. And we'll, we'll say a little bit about the grant aid scheme as well. Um, I suppose, so what are the risks posed by a poor system? And the primary risk is the, the microbial pathogens, um, the risk effectively to drinking water that a, a poorly operating septic tank poses. Um, and we can see on the table there 
you know, fecal coliforms from a conventional septic tank, you have about a million per hundred mils. Um, so a couple of million in a glass of a glass of um, effluent, we'll say. Um, you also have phosphorus, which can have implications for eutrophication in, in surface waters and our rivers and our lakes. Um, and you have nitrogen, which again has implications for eutrophication, particularly in our estuaries. Um, I suppose just to, just to compare and contrast with, with other polluting matters that are out there, and I suppose our day job involves septic tanks, but it also involves dealing with agriculture um, and agricultural pollution problems. So just to compare what, what the, relatively speaking, what sewage is compared to things like soil water from a, a dirty yard and a farmyard, um, sig the soil water is significantly higher pollution potential. Cattle slurry, if you take raw sewage at 300 BOD or biochemical oxygen demand, cattle slurry is in the region of 15,000 to 20,000. Um, and pig slurry is stronger still. And you can see a much higher nitrogen and phosphorus contents in those two. So much higher polluting potential for, for our rivers and our lakes, we'll say. Um, silage effluent, huge polluting potential. And something like milk escaping into a watercourse has massive polluting potential. You know, it, it's orders of magnitude away from raw sewage. So it's, it's just to put it in a little bit of context there. Okay, so the first step in this process was registration of septic tanks. Um, and we thought we had a lot of protests when that started, but it hasn't turned out to be anything compared to, to the, the, the whole water thing at this stage. Um, so under the legislation, existing septic tanks or domestic wastewater treatment systems should have been registered by the 1st of February 2013. And that's an important date, and we'll, we'll, we'll say why later. Um, by the 23rd of May 2014, about 50,500 households in County Cork had registered. We estimate there's about a half a million households served about by septic tanks in the country, and about 58,000 in County Cork. Now, that's, a, that's a, an estimate. Um, nobody knows the exact number, but it's, it's about 58,000. So we have about 86% of eligible households registered at this stage, which, which isn't bad. Um, People can still register, and there are still registrations going on. Most of the registrations that are happening at this stage are happening because we're calling to do an inspection, or because maybe the house is changing hands and wasn't registered at that stage, and it can't change hands without being registered. Um, everybody will have to renew their registration after five years. Um, a lot of people registered initially for five euro. Um, it then went up to 50 euro, so we'll see what it'll be like in five years' time. Um, it's an offence not to register, and has a penalty of up to five thousand euro if you're prosecuted in the district court. Um, for those building new houses, they should register within ninety days of connecting the house to the wastewater treatment system. So that's the registration process. I'm going to move on to the national inspection plan, um, and again we're back to the legislation, Water Services Amendment Act 2012, to require the EPA produce a national inspection plan, which they did. Um, and it outlines basically the approach should be taken with respect to dealing with septic tanks. Um, and there's two parts to it, as I said earlier. There's a citizen awareness strategy or the public awareness campaign. Um, and there's the risk-based inspections. The citizen awareness strategy is important because of the number of inspections we're doing, or partly because of the number of inspections we're doing. We have a half a million systems throughout the country. It would be practically impossible to inspect all those in a short time. Hence the importance of having an awareness strategy out there. Inform people of what the potential problems are and what, what the simple solutions they have to dealing with those. And the EPA have produced a number of leaflets that were outside at the door. If people didn't get them coming in, they can pick them up on the way out. And we have plenty more of them. Um, and I, I'll go through what we've been doing and what we're required to do. So the water services authorities are required to roll out a citizen awareness strategy prior to, prior to initiation of inspections and on an ongoing basis. Um, and the purpose of it is to raise awareness. Um, and identify what, what the dangers are with a poorly working septic tank. Um, 
I, I'm saying septic tank because it kind of trips off my tongue, but I'm, you know, I'm including all domestic wastewater treatment systems within that. Um, the leaflets kind of identify what are the steps people can take to make sure their system is working as well as it can and, and to protect their own health and their neighbours. Um, and ideally promote best practice. So what have we done to date? Um, we have leaflets and posters in all our council offices and all our libraries. Um, we've distributed leaflets effectively to anybody that will take them from us. Um, so the citizens <laughs> advice centres have them. We have Mintagusk offices. We've kind of we've 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 tried to identify where do people in rural areas congregate. Where can we get the message out? So Tagusk offices. We did a bit of work with the likes of Winter Natira. Um, we have them in a lot of doctor surgeries. We have them in health centres. Um, we've done some news items on the local press and the national press, and the EPA obviously have been doing it as well on an ongoing basis. Um, we have information on our website, www.carcoco.ie, um, and we have a lot of links and, and attachments there that people can open and look at, and th there's quite a bit of information on that. Um, and we've been pre making presentations on an ongoing basis, um, and it's great to get the opportunity to speak to yourselves here, obviously. Um, so, okay, we'll move on to the inspections and where are we going with the inspections. Um, and I suppose one of the questions we're always asked is, you know, who's going to be inspected and is it targeted? It is targeted, but everybody is liable to inspection. Um, the EPA or the Environmental Protection Agency have given priority to areas where water quality is most at risk. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute. Um, They've basically divided up the country up into kilometer squares, one kilometer squares, and they've assigned a risk to each of those squares. Um, one of eight risks. Um, and that, they've done that risk assessment, and there's a whole paper available, a 70 or 80 page paper available on that risk assessment. And again, I'll give a link to that at the end of the, the presentation. Um, but they've done a very detailed risk assessment using source pathway and receptor model. Um, and effectively what they've looked at is the density of septic tanks within an area, the percolation or infiltration characteristics of the soils and the bedrock in the, that area, and an estimate of how much attenuation you'll, you'll achieve through that soil and bedrock. Um, from that risk assessment, they've assigned a number of inspections in each zone to each local authority, and, and I'll try and flesh that out in a little bit now. Um, so these are the eight risk zones. We have, we have four categories. We have low, moderate, high, and very high. And they're further subdivided depending on whether you're in an area where there's a sensitive receptor. And what I mean by sensitive receptors are a groundwater drinking water supply, so the catchment area of a groundwater drinking water supply, a bathing water, one of our designated bathing waters, and we have 13 designated bathing waters in the county, High quality river status sites. So our, our, our best quality sites, according to the EPA, are classed as sensitive receptors. Freshwater pearl mussel catchment is classed as a sensitive receptor, which means that an awful lot of North Cork, effectively most of the black water, is a sensitive receptor. Parts of areas west of Bandon, where you have the, the, the Bandon Ka River where there's some freshwater pearl mussel, and areas further west. Um, under the new plan, which is, we're waiting with bated breath for the new plan at the moment, which will take us from 2015 onwards, um, we're told that designated shellfish waters are going to be a protected area also. So the, the, the catchment areas draining to designated shellfish waters will be designated as sensitive areas. And we have 16 of those in the county. Okay. I said a while ago that it was based on risk ranking. Um, so if, if we look at zone 1A, and if, if, if you think back, zone 1A is low risk, 1 is low risk, and A means it's not in an area of a sensitive receptor. So about 46% of the country is in that zone. Um, it's low risk, not a sensitive receptor, and we're doing 13 inspections. We're required to do 13 inspections within that area. Whereas if we go to 4B, which is very high risk, and in an area of a sensitive receptor, 
We're doing 24 inspections. And that's out of a total of, I'm, work, I'm operating this on the basis of the first 99 inspections which we got for the first year of the plan. So about 24% are in the high, high risk zone, which is only 4% of the, country, the county. Okay, and, and this is a map basically showing the, the square kilometre grids. Um, this is top left of the map is, as far as I can remember, it's, it's Carrigaline, yep. Um, and you can see it going out to Ringaskiddy. The dark area is a sewered area. Um, if I can move away from the camera for a moment, maybe. Sewered area around Crosshaven sword area. You can see this area is low risk. And it's low risk for two reasons. The light green area is low risk for probably a couple of reasons. Relatively no, low numbers of septic tanks, good infiltration characteristics. You know, generally good soils, um, good deep soils with good infiltration. <coughs> you don't have a sensitive receptor there. If we move down to this area, Fountainstone Beach is here. That's our sensitive receptor. That's a designated bathing water. You can see the area around here is hatched. That's all a sensitive receptor because it all drains to the bathing water. Um, and you can see within that, I should have a pointer, my apologies. You can see here, you have a square kilometer grid here. Part of it is a B zone, part of it is an A zone. So it's 3A and 3B. It becomes a 3B if it's within the area of the sensitive <coughs> receptor. Um, so that, that's, that's, there are the risk zones. That's done for the whole country. It can be seen on um, Envision maps. If you go into the EPA, the, the Environmental Protection Agency uh, website, you can see those. Um, so the EPA basically told us how we, how we should go about um, selecting our sites for inspection. We're given the number of inspections we must do in each risk zone area. Um, we look at the priority areas within our own county, and effectively what we're doing then, we're coming down to the square kilometre grid area, and we're picking at random within that. Um, so again, moving in a little bit closer here, I don't know whether you can see the pink dots and the, the yellow dots. They're effectively, they come from geodirectory. They're, they're um, places that have a, an address. Um, we know there's a house there, or we know there's a business there. Um, if they're outside the, the, the sewered areas, which are the dark areas at the top, that's, that's around Douglas, um, and further south is Money Gourney, and heading out towards Carrigaline, out to Ban Ray. Um, if it's outside the sewered area, we're assuming it has a septic tank or a domestic wastewater treatment system. Um, so we'll pick one of the, the squares there and we'll decide on a, a house within that. And effectively the way we're selecting is we're selecting a cluster of maybe two or three septic tanks within a, an area to do in a day. Mahmoud will speak a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, okay, so I'm nearly finished. I suppose just, just to, to summarise, inspections are carried out by Cork County Council personnel. Um, there was a lot of changes around this, be even while the, the legislation was being drafted. Um, initially, there were suggestions that would be done by <coughs> private people. Um, it then changed and came back to local authority personnel who are doing all the inspections throughout the country. Um, all our inspectors have a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge in dealing with, with I suppose, general inspections and dealing with complaints on septic tanks on an ongoing basis. Um, and to qualify as an inspector, you must do a two-day training course and pass an exam with the Environmental Protection Agency. Um, for the first tranche of inspections, which ran from the 1st of July 2013 to the 30th of June 2014, there were 1,000 inspections nationally. That's 1,000 inspections out of 500,000 septic tanks in the country. Um, we were allocated 99 of those in County Cork. Um, we had another tranche of inspections from the 1st of July 2014 to the 31st of December 
2014, and we were allocated 46 within that. 2015 onwards, we don't know how many we're going to be allocated for certain. We believe it's going to be in the region of 100, but we don't know. We're told unofficially that it's going to be along the lines of what has happened so far. So if we're to inspect every septic tank in the country, we're going to be a while at it. I think Mahmoud and myself will get very old at this job. Um, but we'll see. Um, okay, I'm going to hand over to Mahmoud for inspection process. If people have questions, we'll deal with them later, I think. Is that okay? Thank you. Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks very much for such an impressive number of attendees. Uh, Frank asked me how often, how many people attend such meetings. I said it depends really whether there is a, as a subject, the topic, but I think you have, uh, you know, you've given us a, a good picture of your interest, I hope, in the topic being discussed tonight. Um, I got involved last March from water services to the environment. Uh, to be specifically involved in the team of uh, waste uh, of the septic tank inspection, which is headed by Frank. Um, it's, uh, this, uh, it's part of uh, the section that deals with farm inspection, uh, water quality, and then the septic tank inspection came in addition uh, last, last year. Um, so my uh, area would be uh, specifically on the septic tank and uh, it is a team of uh, four to six uh, inspectors who does other work as well but um, with the, the leadership of Frank I sort of guide the, the bit on the septic uh, septic tank so uh, I and that's why this bit is left for me to talk to you about um, the inspection process is really could be divided into three uh, sections or three bars. We do uh, a bit of in the office, which is quite quite a bit actually in the office. We we look at the the selection of sites first, uh, which Frank covered already. We uh, we we know the EPA tell us how many we're going to have to do for uh, each year. They haven't yet said how many for 2015. And um, uh, we go straight into the Eden site, which is part of the EPA site. And uh, Frank showed you a, uh, a slide. And we start picking uh, sites uh, with the category of risk in mind, obviously. We are, are abided. And as he showed you, the, the low risk area there is very few being backed up, and the very high risk area, there is more, obviously. But we are guided by this. We have no choice. And the reason I'm saying this is because we have to explain to people when we get to site, why me? And we have to go through this. Although they have been given all this in a leafless information uh, when we send out the notification letter. And that's why, it really, I'm coming to. We have to prepare what we call a notification letter, which is telling people that uh, you have been picked up or selected, <laughs> and we explain why we in we include the three leaflets that you, you, you it's uh, you've seen as you come in. We include uh, three or four pages of information on the selection process, the inspection plan, and what we're doing. A covering letter to say who I am, and the date and the time, and we try to keep it within plus or minus half an hour to get there. Um, now, the policy at the moment is hand delivery. It is obviously uh, expensive, but we're finding it out. It's easier to do, to, de de to deliver the notification letter by hand because you get to know the people that you're going to meet in two or three weeks' time because obviously that's the length of uh, a minimum of 10 working days. And in some cases, you break the ice with them and you have a chat and they feel comfortable that they've seen you. And you obviously say that uh, in, on this date, I'll turn up with a, a colleague of mine to do the inspection. Um, if I have a chance to take uh, the phone number and, the, and, and their uh, you know, full name, uh, that would be nice. And sometimes they offer you to come in to show you where the septic tank is, which is uh, 
requires an easier task than you, when you come with uh, to, to do the inspection. Um, the the inspection process normally. I just want to f show you some slides so it make life easier. Is it through this? No. Oh, inspection random select. Yeah, we've covered the random selection of site within the specified zone, which uh, uh, Frank already covered and I mentioned. Uh, the written notification of at least 10 working days, which I have spoke about. Um, obviously, we don't charge for this, the first inspection. Um, advice of outcome following inspection. Now, um, it is a must that you don't leave the site before you tell uh, the vendor or the landlord or the landlady what is the outcome. Yeah, and, and obviously we are all qualified to do so. You can't, uh, you can't leave it until you get to the office and decide. I think that we are all trained and um, experienced enough to say. And that's why I'll just show you straight through copy of inspection report. Within. Uh, now, once you get back to the office, Obviously, you have to uh, let them know that you'll have a full report within 21 days delivered to your address. Uh, but the result is either a pass or a fail. Will be Does the, yeah. Now, uh, once uh, we get to site, and this is the bit that we do out there, we, uh, we lift all the manhole covers. Can, can I just look through the... The slides. Okay. Yeah, this is uh, slide number one. It's just to show you that we don't leave uh, a stone unturned or or a manhole uncovered. So we we take all the cover off simply because we want to know uh, the, where does everything goes to uh, in terms of uh, the effluent out of the house, the roof, and obviously the storm water uh, and uh, the grey water that comes out of the dishwasher washing machine and uh, the basin. Um, we do the testing by taking, uh, by following a method of elimination, which means we actually f take uh, the roots of the uh, storm water and we try to make sure that it doesn't go to the septic tank. And we use uh, uh, the, the hose pipe that we um, take with us uh, to, um, to, uh, to to discharge water straight into the. <coughs> uh, Billy here has got uh, in his hand a small bottle. We use a, a dye, uh, environmentally friendly dye, uh, for different type of. Uh, uh, water. So, uh, for example, uh, uh, this is looks like uh, a storm, uh, water coming from the roof. So we use a green on the side. We decide to use a green dye or or blue or purple, whatever it is, and we make sure that it doesn't turn up at the foot. Uh, remember, by then we have already lifted, found the septic tank, uh, lifted the cover to make sure that we see that the water from the roof doesn't come into the septic tank. <coughs> Um, this is just another slide to show you. Sometimes it's difficult to find an easy uh, source for water, so unfortunately we have to fill up our own empty containers and uh, bring it to the source where we want to do the test. Um, this is an example of uh, a point where roof water, grey water, and uh, water from the sink of this will all meet in one place. It's very difficult, obviously, at this stage to say it's a failure because you'll have to, obviously, uh, do some testing to find out that the roof <coughs> water goes, uh, you know, separate way than the, the grey water. The grey water and the effluent from the house should go straight into the septic tank. Uh, this is what we've been given to follow and um, this picture doesn't really tell you a lot except that when you have to uh, do a little bit more work to find out where uh, everything goes. That's another uh, slides. Um, 
I think it's clear here that there is uh, the roof water is coming and next to it is the grey water and that's not allowed. Uh, but again, you know, this is uh, needs a further investigation. So um, this is the same one, just to show you that the grey and the roof. There, there is obviously a stage where uh, uh, the landlord or the landlady has diverted the roof water but um, there is uh, obviously an inclination that the, uh, storm water goes through to the septic tank so it could constitute a failure depending obviously where everything goes. This is a blockage where uh, effluent from the house is coming through uh, is mixing up with the uh, grey water and it's coming out. So, um, yeah, that's another. Uh, I think this, I'm trying here to show here yeah, what this manhole here uh, has got another storm uh, foul here, foul uh, drain there, but I think there is a, a, a crack in here where. I think, you know, the three get mixed up, the, fa the, fa the storm, the foul, and the uh, grey water get mixed up. This is the sort of things that we look out for. Uh, yeah, another uh, picture of the dye being used. And this is a drain just discharging uh, out, which obviously is not allowed. This is the sort of things that we uh, come across. This is me pointing at a percolation area that's gone wrong. This is obviously, uh, you shouldn't see the bonding on the service. And uh, in this case, we served him an advisory notice that it is a failure. And we gave him about, uh, we're guided how, for, uh, of how much we can actually, how much duration to get him to do, depending obviously on the severity of the work. So we could give this uh, landlord a six months to repair and call us back to have a look. And obviously we, we will do our own testing to make sure that this is being remedified. Uh, this is near in Shakira somewhere. I did this with a, an, a colleague of mine. And you can see that the septic tank is actually this, you know, this building here uh, is a concrete septic tank. Um, but it's not really catching anything because you look here and the vibe is <laughs> broken. <laughs> so it's not, um, you know, it's, uh, yeah, there's um, very, very s the same side where the grey water is also boring away from the septic tank. And this is uh, going back a little bit and just show you what devastation it does to the countryside. This is, uh, this is why I picked up this slide because it's, uh, it's not really funny when you are, uh, you know, leave your effluent, just being discharged anywhere in the backyard. This is the house here at a high uh, elevation, uh, and we had to be very careful how to slide down to be able to see this. I think maybe when he built this septic tank, he thought nobody in his right mind will be able to scale down and to have a look at it. But obviously, with the inspection plan, we, we have to do it. And he was backed up, as Frank said, at random. You know, we, it's one of these uh, items. <coughs> this is just to, to show you what we do with the dye again. Um, you know, we obviously want to make, it, it, it shouldn't, uh, you know, it shouldn't obviously show to the service. Um, this is, it pollutes the countryside and discharge to the septic tank should be through covered by, not, uh, you know, not uh, in a, an open trench. Uh, the same side again with, uh, with this. Now, how do we uh, pass or fail the, uh, <coughs> the septic tank? We are being issued with this uh, uh, sludge uh, judge, or t is it, is it uh, three tubes or two, depending on how deep the septic tank is, um, that you create a vacuum by a valve that actually opens up once it hits the first surface uh, of the septic tank, and you punch through 
the three layers, the scum, the clear water, uh, or the flow and flow, and then down to the sludge. Uh, so until you are, you you're sure that you've hit the bottom of the septic tank, and you take it up. Now that doesn't look healthy, and it looks like uh, a failure. I think it's a failed site because of the amount of sludge or the depth of the sludge in the sludge test uh, judge. This is a different one where it looks healthier and it could g it, it's, a, it's a bus because obviously you can see the sludge depth it's about three four inches down the bottom. Uh, this is a failure because of the depth of the sludge uh, above the, the mark, the yellow mark. Um, this hasn't been touched obviously for years and it's very hard to crack through this. So we couldn't even bunch the, 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 uh, the sludge uh, the tester through it. Uh, this is definitely a failure because uh, it's, the house I think it was 25 to 30 years old and I think the septic tank has not been touched since. So this, that's why the slide is just to show you what, uh, what we come through. So this is, uh, uh, I was talking about uh, this one really in another slide. But this is a, a foul manhole. This is a storm with a hole in it. So obviously the storm uh, uh, pipe is taking on the foul because of the crack in the foul. This is a, a failure, you know. So in our inspection, we don't just look for a failed septic tank or, or the system. We actually cover all the system. Uh, simply because we are guided through Eden system. When you go back to the office, to the third stage, and bunch all the information, you will see the question asked, and you have to answer to is, uh, it covers manholes, uh, the system, the pipes, the inlet, outlet, the system itself, the septic tank, um, and you have obviously to, uh, to inspect uh, all aspects of the system. This is showing you a discharge in a field or in a ditch, which shouldn't be. So obviously, this is the sort of things that we uh, fail. You know, he has to get it right, and he should stop discharging into the environment or the open field. This is the gray water, as you can see. Yeah. Now, on the completion of the site work, uh, this is the second stage now of the work that's been done. We go back to the office and we uh, start working on the written part. Uh, the advisory notice uh, is issued for non-compliance, as you've seen in some slides. Um, but to be, uh, in, in general, most of the failure so far is on uh, sludge, uh, desludging. You know, people just leave it there and they don't really take care of it. And uh, um, I think there was a percentage, uh, Frank, wasn't yeah. it? For <laughs> yeah, we'll have to uh, set out the reason for the non compliance. We obviously are uh, uh, having to set out, and there is a guideline through the, sa the Eden system uh, for to, to tell them exactly why the reason for the non compliance. Uh, advice what next steps you need to take. Um, you are obviously talking to the general public and uh, you've got to tell them exactly step by step what uh, action uh, they should take next. Uh, sorry, household can request an inspection earlier. If you are not happy about the first inspection, uh, you'll have to bar it with 20 euro and ask for a second one. So far, I think we have one, and Frank took it on him to do the second inspection on, on this. Um, householder can appeal advice on this to the district court. It's obvious if they're not very happy with our decision. And failure to comply with the advisory is an offense. Okay, sample. Yeah, I, uh, I put this one just to show you what sort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, sample, sample advisory notice that we write to them. Uh, there's 
evidence that the tank or unit has not been dislodged appropriately. That's a failure under section 3.1. Uh, there's evidence that the level of sludge in the tank or unit shows the need for desludging. That's section 3 one, the same one. Uh, measures required desludge the tank using an authorized contractor and dispose of content in accordance with all relevant national uh, legislation. That's uh, just to give you an example of what we, uh, uh, what we say in this. Uh, but the main thing, obviously, on the failure mode, uh, things will change. Uh, remediation work, the number of treatment reducers to human. Um, the remedi remedial work has to obviously be uh, done to address all the failure in the advisory notice, and not more and not less. And the reason I'm saying this, be some people uh, seek uh, grants f to do the work, and uh, we have to be very careful that they have not gone and did a lot more work and they claim money for it. So we, we, we specifically want them to do the certain type of work as requested in the advisory notice. And that's what really this is uh, for. A new system must comply with the building regulation and meet the CN 1256 standard. Have regard to the EBA code of practice, which we just have noticed. Planning permission not required. Yeah, this is, uh, we often ask, uh, you know, do I need planning permission <coughs> to do the remedial work? And the answer is no. <coughs> uh, you should be qualified from the design and install new system. Yeah, grant aid. Uh, this slide is just to tell you, to give you some <coughs> flavor of what uh, grants available. And, um, all advisory notice is sent out, the failure one, with uh, a lot of information on the grant aid. So it gives you the household income, uh, percentage approved cost, and that's really where uh, the experience of our team member comes into it. You've got to be able to uh, look at the grant application. Work must be in, uh, in response to an inspection advisory notice, obviously, before you apply for the grants aid. And the uh, system must be registered by the 1st of February. This is the deadline that uh, Frank was talking about earlier. Um, there was a lot of talk about it, uh, uh, TV advert. I think, you know, people should have gone and done the registration before the 1st of uh, February 2013. If you miss this date, Unfortunately, we can't look at your uh, grant application. <coughs> this is just a, a, a flow chart for our own use, just to, to show, but I included here just to show you the steps <coughs> taken uh, in following up uh, a grant application. <coughs> I don't want to bore you with that, so it's, a, it's a, you know, it goes through uh, the, the inspector who was on site who served the advisory notice the program manager who is looking after the whole operation of the septic tank, and the, the, the section head uh, gets involved when there is a failure, uh, uh, you know, or some consultation work to be done uh, until we find, and there's a lot of admin work down the end to bait the check. And then compliance system out of the first yeah, out of the first 132 inspections, 73 were non-compliant. This is uh, uh, the figure up to date, wasn't it? Just before we we came. We, we, we have some more done than that, but this just gives you an indication yeah. of, of what the non-compliances were of the first 100. Yeah, two. 18 uh, system identified with major non-compliances will require significant work, including replacement of septic tank or percolation area. Yeah, that's, uh, that's why I was showing you yeah. about percolation area. Some needs to be uh, dug up and re, uh, reconstructed. Uh, so there's 18 system, st is 18 of these. Uh, three houses could, uh, could not locate septic tank. <laughs> and this is uh, common. Um, we, uh, in w the last one I did in the 10th of November, it, uh, in, one, in one particular case, it took us a good hour and a half, the two of us, you know, in and out, over the fence and over there. And luckily, the, my colleague is thinner and lighter than me, so he was jumping and doing all the, the hard work that I couldn't do. 
but we finally found it in the wood behind the house. I would say about two or three hundred meters away from the main building, but we found it. <laughs> 48 system required desludging. Yeah, this is why I said it's the most common uh, failure method is the desludging. Uh, nine system with roof water by the septic tank. Uh, <coughs> you're not allowed to discharge uh, roof wa uh, into the septic tank. Ten system with grey water by the drains. Uh, the grey water has to go into the septic tank. 26 system with uh, foul effluent leaking from, from the system. This is very common as you can see, 26 out of the 132. Uh, one system with no power connected to the treatment system. <laughs> and one malfunctioning wetland system. Um, they, I did this with a colleague of mine, and they kept blaming the contractor for not giving them the reed beds properly constructed, and that's what the last one is all about. Um, yeah, out of our allocation of 99 for Cork, um, which we have completed, the total number of compliant is 39, the total number of non compliant inspections is 60. Uh, very high percentage here, the 60. And I'm saying high because I think the next, the next 50, it was in total, when we added the 50 to the 100, we were, we were f doing 50. We'll see that in a minute anyway. Yeah. But that was, if you could go back to that one more. <coughs> Sorry, yeah. There was quite a variation across the country. Um, there were some of the counties as low as 15% and some as high as 70%. So. <coughs> um, I don't know how to go back now. Oh, okay, okay. <coughs> yes, and uh, you want to comment on this, uh, Frank, about the... Uh, yeah, we had, we had 60% non-compliances and Galway had, I suppose, the closest number of inspections to us. They had 80 odd inspections and they had only 15% non-compliances. Yeah. Um, so I just, I think... I have <laughs> Instructions on the section taking preparation and in some of the counties they are going to also do that. I don't think so. Yes, I know some counties did, I'm not sure about that. Yeah. There was a huge variation there, and I think a lot of it is unexplained at the moment. <coughs> okay. <coughs> and this is uh, the inspection by rest zone. From 20, yeah, this is from last year, to, yeah, in, in the year time. So, total submitted inspection in the first uh, rest zone is 17, total number uh, compliance. Which this is really to tell you that up to now, I think we have done 145 from July 2013, isn't it? And uh, the non compliance is 54%. Uh, total number advisory units issues 33 and uh, the closed one is 45. That's just to give you a flavor uh, of what we go through, and that giving you obviously the rest zone in there. I'm sure that the strategy implemented are successful. Yeah. That's your bit. <laughs> I'll step in just to finish off. Yes. The, the EPA are currently reviewing the, the first tranche of the National Inspection Plan, the first kind of 1,500 inspections that have been carried out, and the public awareness program. Um, they're looking to see what was done well, what wasn't done well. They'll obviously be looking at the level of non-compliances within and around the various counties. Um, and they'll be setting out what the new inspection plan will be. I think they're going to give us a three or four year plan on a, in, in coming very shortly. Um, so they'll be using the knowledge that has been gained and the knowledge that we've um, built up over the first 1,500 inspections across the country to determine where we go from here. Um, and obviously they'll be having an IT Europe to make sure Europe are satisfied with what we're doing as well. Um, so we're, we're waiting to see what's coming next, um, but I'm sure the public awareness campaign will continue on and will probably be built up again. Um, 
and we will have further inspections to do. We'll wait and see how many. Um, if you want a bit further information, we've given out some leaflets there. Um, the, we have quite a bit of information on the Cork County Council website at Septic Tanks. Um, you'll find a lot of links there to the EPA to, the, the, um, to protect our water if anybody wants to register a tank. Um, there's links to the Department of the Environment website where there's a lot of further information as well. Um, so the EPA, there's householder information in septic tanks. Um, you can go onto the EPA website and get the, how they did the risk assessment, um, which is interesting, but um, quite detailed. Um, under the Department of Environment, Community and Local Government website, there's, there's information on wastewater treatment systems. Um, and you can go to protect our water if you want to register or find out about registering septic tanks. So I think that's, that's as much as we have to say in our presentation. We'll do our best to answer questions if anybody has questions. Thank you.